I want to continue to learn from your story yeah. so that entrepreneurs out there can take some encouragement away and some real things that will equip them. So take us from that first trade show, four, four grills. You got the deal in China. You helped build the, the, the warehouse, essentially, or the operations so they got yeah. to manufacture. Yeah. You walk away with seven dollars $800,000 worth of business. Yeah. Walk us through the next couple of years. What was the growth like? What were the challenges? Um, we started with two employees. It was just Carrie and I. Um, and had you left the Siemens? Yeah, we both quit Siemens. Okay, okay. And um, we started uh, Kamado Joe. Okay. Hired an engineering firm. Um, hired a marketing firm, right. um, had a factory in China, uh, went to a trade show, um, rented a warehouse space in Atlanta, um, small, I think it was the first warehouse was seven or 8,000 square feet. Wow. Um, and you know, I got on a plane after the trade show, went to China, firmed up the, the design and, and, uh, said, go make, you know, 10 containers of product. We had all sorts of issues with the first several shipments, um, you know, not being, you know, made correctly, that we had to think on our feet and yeah. unassemble, reassemble, get parts repainted in the U.S. I mean, it's not without bumps in the road. Right. But it's all learning experiences. You know, we invited our Chinese guys over to the U.S. and explained to them what the American consumer wanted and expected and, you know, um, finally got the quality issues uh, ironed out. And uh, we had a number of advantages to that first product over the incumbent Green Egg. I mean, it was, it was fully assembled. You know, we had you know, used better metal. We galvanized our metal. Um, you know, we had thicker metal, thicker ceramics, better gaskets, better top vents. So there was, coming out of the gate, you know, we had a little bit of innovation mm -hmm. in, our, in our product. Um, but we quickly went from two employees to three to four to five. Um, I would tell you, you know, as you scale your business from, you know, being a $1 million company in year one to being a $3 million company in year two, you have to think about really three things. You, you have to think about the people, mm -hmm. the systems, and the processes that you need to, to, uh, to be successful. Mm -hmm. And you always got to be, I think as a small business owner, you always got to be thinking ahead to, you know, how you get work done in a $5 million business is very different from how you get work done in a $1 million business. And so you got to scale your organization, you got to scale um, your people, and you got to scale your systems. Mm. And so, you know, you start out with QuickBooks, but, you know, you, you, you'll soon realize that a $10 million manufacturing business, can't, you can't run it on right. QuickBooks Enterprise. So, wow. so you got to start thinking about ERP systems. You know, very quickly you realize that the business can't revolve around Bobby Brennan. You, you need talent and mm. you, you need smart people. And you got to hire people. You know, right now we're a $30 million business. You know, we're hiring people, you know, that I think are capable of taking our business to be $100 million. You know, we, we, we're hiring people from... You know, Ernst and Young, um, and Deloitte, uh, KPMG. Um, these are smart people that you've probably not typical of a thirty sure. million dollar business. But as a small business owner, you can say, well, you know, th this is the team that's got to take us to a hundred million dollars. Yeah, that really is an investment, isn't it? It's huge. It's huge. But I, I got to tell you, it's a lot of fun not being the smartest person in the room anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's. Um, one of my lessons learned is make sure you hire the right people. Right. You Why know? is it fun? I love that you said, I think that's a healthy perspective. And I think some people will go, what, what do you mean it's fun? Because, boy, that's a big deal when the, when the co-founder goes, it's fun not being the smartest person in the room. Why? Why is it fun? Just to be able to sit back at a meeting and, and see people that you've hired, uh, people that you've motivated. Yeah, that's um, so healthy. It's, it's, uh, it's energizing to me. Yeah. It's really energizing to me. And I, I think that's probably, you know, I, I do have friends that are at different stages of their entrepreneurial journey. Some are 10 years ahead of me, some are five years behind me. But I would say to you that the number one mistake that we all make is we spend too much time in the trenches, mm -hmm. in the weeds, and, and not understanding the big picture. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't hire quickly enough the right talent. But I got I got three or four guys in my business today that if, if I left for a month, uh, they wouldn't miss me a bit. Mm, boy, that's interesting. There are some things I don't want to delegate. Sure. You know, such as you know, I like 
engaging with consumers. Yeah. I, I like having my finger on, on how we're doing in the market with our customers, but um, there are you know, there are better salespeople than Bobby Brown out there. There are better marketing people than Bobby Brown out there. There are better product development people. And so I, I have a lot of fun. GE trained me really well. I mean, I spent uh, 13 years with GE during the Jack Welsh years. Okay, and, and yeah. it, it was Jack's really, been a guest on this show. Has he really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, big shoes to I fill. I love Jack. Huge fan myself. But uh, he was he was very instrumental in my leadership training and uh you know, kind of drilled it into anybody who was coming up through the management ranks at the time, the importance of having, you know, uh, talented people working for you. Mm, that's so rude. That's so rich. All right. You said people, systems, and processes. Yeah. Those were the big three. Yeah. I, I think we understand people. We spent a good time on people just there. Um, I love this because I'm a big sports fan. Okay. And so I've always been enamored by high school football coaches. Yeah. And, the, and our audience has heard me talk about this before. Mm-hmm that win year after year in a public school situation where they're not recruiting. Correct. But they've got a local feeder system, right, with yep. the local football teams. Mm -hmm. And these guys that have been there 30 years and they win championship after championship after championship, and it's because they got the system. Correct. These kids know how to run this these plays before they ever sniff yep. junior varsity. Yep. Yep. Um, and so I believe in that so much because I see it with champions in sport. Yep. Systems and yep. processes. Uh, what's the difference in how you use those words? Because you, you clearly you mentioned what, what's the difference between a system and a process. Well, I, when I think of a system, I'm thinking of uh, IT. Um, I'm thinking Accounting, of software like solutions. Got you. Okay. I'm thinking of being uh, on the on the on the leading edge of, of using whatever tools that, okay. that, that are out there. All right. A, a process for me is just the the X's and O's of right. how we're going to get this job done. Right. And so there's a supply chain process. There's a manufacturing process. There's a quality control right. process. There's a financial planning process. Financial closing process. But it's it's really important to to automate and systematize mm -hmm. using you know whatever you know latest software, later latest uh, techniques, but uh, we're we're big on on having a defined process yeah. and, and a, a defined system. I love that. Okay, so that leads me to the marriage mm -hmm. between processes and culture. Oh. Culture is a buzzword. Some people don't even know what it, real culture is, yeah. but processes and culture are so intertwined. I've talked yeah. about this on this on this show. So I, you're from Atlanta, Correct. so that's Chick Fil A headquarters as well. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So Dan, Kathy's a friend. When you go into a Chick Fil A here in Franklin, yeah. and you order something tonight, and then you go to the one near your house tomorrow morning and get breakfast, and you say to the young kid behind the desk, "Hey, thank you." What is that kid going to say to you? My pleasure. Is that a and, process and, or is that a culture thing? It's a culture thing. Yes, but what drove it? The process. Yes. <laughs> See, that's what I love. No, no. If, 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 if you, to me, culture is very simple. Yeah. You, you know, it's, it's, if you do something repeatedly. That's it. It, it becomes part of the culture. People ask me, how do you change the culture? You just change what you do and yes. change what you say. Yes. And it just, you know, it, culture, culture is a byproduct yeah. of. That's uh, it. The uh, process uh, is that somewhere at some point, every kid that gets hired there goes, listen. I don't care how many times the customer says thank you. You yeah. have to say my pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And then I feel as a customer, I feel like a million dollars. That's right. That's right. And so I love that. I, I set yeah. you up. I knew you how were you going to answer it. <laughs> no, but it's really truth, isn't it? It's ab absolutely. No, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you. So more. what are the processes? So open up open up the old uh, curtain here and what are some processes that you, Bobby, are still super passionate about making sure that these are alive and well at Kamana Joe? We, we have a process for innovating. Okay. You know, I, I think if you were to ask our customer base, uh, what do we do particularly well? I, I think they would tell you that, uh, and what is our culture? I would say the words they would use is they would say we're probably innovative, we're transparent, um, and we probably developed a good reputation for customer service yeah. uh, over the years. So let's talk about innovation. Um, we don't have an all-employee meeting. We don't have a weekly email that we don't, where we're not talking about new product development. It's just, it's ingrained in our organization, but it's ingrained in our organization because we make it 
a topic at every meeting and we talk about it. And, and if, you know, culture becomes what you make important in an organization, in my opinion. Mm. And so we have a process, you know, where, where we already know what the products are for, you know, 2018. We know what the products are for 2019, 2020. We have a, a product development roadmap that, you know, everybody clearly understands. I even talk about it online. You know, I get customer feedback. We're very open. We're very transparent with internally and externally about that. But um, definitely our, our culture is one of what can we do better mm. to improve the product and improve the experience. Yeah, uh, You model the way on that uh, because I, I have read and I've got it here in my notes that you actually have a little bit of uh, back and forth we won't call it arguing with marketing agencies that you've hired <laughs> because you you are in the weeds on a good thing when it comes to real people that are buying your product. You like to engage with them. Is this over the phone? I heard it's on Facebook. I mean, how, how personal are you? Um, I make it a priority, to be honest with you. I think it's so easy now for a business owner to engage with their customers. You know, social media has yep. enabled that. I think it's a tool that, that you have to use, but I make it a priority. I, I set some realistic goals, you know, I'm not, you know, but I try to answer the phone five times a day. Um, I, I try to reach out to a consumer personally one time a day. Now, when you say answer the phone, I want to make sure we don't slide by that. You yeah. mean you answer like the main line that's coming in on customer service? Correct. Yeah. yeah. How does that freak people out? But not I, at all. I, I would say 18 times out of 20, most people, you know, don't know who I am. Well, that's true because you're not saying, hey, right. this is Bobby. I'm the CEO. But there's at least once every third day. Is this, is this Bobby? Is this, is this the <laughs> owner? So, and we usually, you know, usually a 30, 30 minute conversation transpires, but it's a great opportunity for me to ask them, hey, what, what am I doing well? What can we do better? Yeah. What's been your experience with customer service? Why, why are you calling? I think it's really important not to delegate that yeah. as a business owner. That's great. Have you ever taken a call where the, the, the voice and the information on the other end of the line gave you a real stomach ache? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you got to be thick skinned. How do you react to that? You hang <sighs> that phone up. If it's a problem and it's really your problem, I'm imagining somebody's getting a quick call and we're solving it. Well, you know, you, you got to answer the phone with empathy. You got to understand the situation right. that your consumer's in. I mean, uh, people are spending a thousand bucks on my product. That's right. It's not a small amount of money. That's right. You know, I, I, I tell my customer service team, hey, look, I probably make four or five times the national average in, in income, but for me to go out and spend four or $500 on a golf club is a big deal. Sure it is. I'm going to ask my wife permission to do it. That's I'm right. I'm going to go test it three or four times. So think about a customer you know, a guy who's making forty thousand, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, spending twelve hundred dollars on a grill. Yeah. If something goes wrong in his fourth month of ownership, he, there's anxiety involved. Yes, there is. <laughs> and your job is to make sure that that anxiety is dissipated in in three seconds. They need to know that they're in good hands. Yes. And that we're going to stand behind the product, and we're going to do whatever it takes. We're going to move heaven and earth to to take care of the situation. And so. Um, I tell my folks, you know, if, if as a business owner, you know, one of, one of the things I do is I, I try to decide on how we spend time and money. It's not any more complicated than that. You get, you got two types of resources, time yep. and dollars. And every day you have opportunities across your desk. Do I spend money on this or not? Um, do I spend time on this or not? If I had a choice to take care of a thousand customers, you know, for a hundred dollars a piece, you know, warranty issues or, or customer service issues, a hundred thousand dollars on that versus a hundred thousand dollars on a new product versus a hundred thousand dollars on some marketing campaign. Every day of the week, I'm going to yes. take care of your existing customers. That's right. They are your brand ambassadors. Every single one of them that is delighted by your customer service experience is going to tell 50 other people about your product and so how wonderful true. you are to work, for, work so with. So true. So um, customer service and innovation, I think, are ingrained in our culture mm. because it's what we talk about every single day. Yeah. What is the internal communication like at your, at your organization? Because 
what's amazing is you only have 44 team members. I, it, it strikes me as kind of unbelievable because yeah. I, I see you as a national brand and all this. And, and here at Ramsey Solutions, we're like 600 and counting. What's the communication like among the 44? It's very transparent. So we, we share business goals. We share business results. There's no secrets. Everyone knows what the goal is for the month, whether it's a sales goal or a marketing goal, social media goal. We publish those daily. Everyone has access to it, but at the end of the month, we have an all-employee meeting or telecast where everyone everyone calls in, even the remote employees. We share how we did for the month from a sales, profitability, what the business priorities are for the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. So it's very transparent. You know, emails, you know, I, I love what you're doing in the lobby here in terms of, you know, sharing um, sharing goals with, mm -hmm. with all your employees. That's the best practice. So... I actually took a picture of some of your monitors That's great. and uh, we're going to incorporate some yes. of that into our you know it's it's, <clears throat> the, it's the law of the scoreboard right i just think people want to know where they stand it's it, you know the other thing too is it's not my business it's That's our, right it's our business That's right. and it's our customers That's business right. and you know transparency is big to me it builds trust mm -hmm. in your organization um you know we're not big on office politics we just you know here's the problem let's wrestle it Everyone's got an opinion that's valued, um, but no, we, we're very transparent in our communication and our, in our business results. Mm. Everyone knows you know, how we're doing, good, bad, or indifferent.